Welcome to my Chanel. A place that brings interesting and dramatic stories. Hope you have a fun experience. Please listen to the next story. It goes a little something like this. I caught my wife cheating the day before our anniversary. D-Day was 10 days ago, 129. I won't forget that day now either because of the day after our anniversary. Since then, I've been reading a lot of posts on this sub. It has been helpful to know I'm not the only one. Now I'm thinking posting what happened will help me out. It's going to be long because I think details matter, and I've been playing it over and over in my head every day. Our story. Then with my wife, 29 years, married 26. I'm a 51 male, a her 49 female, two grown kids, 24 son, 22 daughter. Meet in college, dated, fell in love, married, and thought what I believed was a great marriage. Did a lot of things together. Talked all the time. Communicated about things that were troublesome. Both of us had successful careers that we both supported each other in along the way. Great love life. Maybe not as often as when we were younger, but just as passionate. She's in IT, and I own a small landscaping company that employs 75 people I started after graduation. She's been working from home a lot since COVID, and we have been talking about me easing out of the day-to-day -day operations and her going part-time. We can spend more time together and travel, etc., now that the kids are established. Looking back, there were no red flags that I've read so much about. No weird texting, no guarding her phone, no clothing changes, no unusual behavior, no nights out with people from work. When she did go out, it was friends and family and always heard from someone the next day how I should have come, but I wanted her to go out without me, and I enjoyed being by myself doing stuff in my shop. She always was home early. To say I was blindsided is an understatement. D-Day. The week before, I had booked a weekend at a romantic bed and breakfast owned by some friends. Our state is open. Winter festival was that weekend. I leave work early to surprise her and tell her to pack a bag. We're going away for our anniversary. I pull my truck in the driveway and find a strange car there. Right away, I just knew. Don't know why, but I did. I'm hoping and praying I'm wrong, but my gut is telling me I'm not. I sit there a while wondering what to do, leave and talk to her later, leave and pretend I didn't see it. Not sure what to do. I'm shaking so bad I can't see straight. When I have something at work I have to do that might be uncomfortable. I always tell myself, man up, get this over with. Suddenly, shaking stops and feel very calm. No idea how, because inside, I'm a wreck. I sneak in the back door and my black lab is laying there with a sad face, like he knows, instead of jumping on me. Man, I love that dog. He stays as I quietly go up the stairs. When I get upstairs, I can hear what is going on in our bedroom. I get to the door and open it and see her boss on top of my wife. I sit in there for a second and yell out, surprise. The shit showed that followed would be laughable if it didn't hurt so much. He rolls off trying to get out of bed, but he gets tangled up in the sheets. My wife is screaming. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And trying to cover up, but can't because he's still tangled up. He finally gets out and starts looking for his clothes. Only they're on the other side of the bed. This just hit me in about the same spot where mine used to end up. Don't know why, but I beat him to them. And grab him. My wife is crying. I'm so sorry over and over. I back up to the door and stand there, and he is standing next to the bed naked. I grab the big easy chair out of the corner and pull it to the door and sit down. He asked for his clothes, and I say no. And tossing my wife's robe from the back of the door, he starts to walk towards me. Now even though I'm 51, I'm in good shape. 6 foot 3, 240. Years of going to the gym and working in landscaping have seen to that. I'm looking at him and say, if you get any closer, it's not going to end well for either of us. You'll be in the hospital and I'll be in jail, so why don't you just sit down? Wife is now sobbing into the pillow and he sits down. After an uncomfortable silence, he asks, what now? My reply is I have no idea. 
Wife is still crying a little, but sits up. Finally, I pull on my phone and tell them that they are going to tell me everything while I record it all. They look at each other, and my wife asks, what do I mean? Everything. I say everything. How it started. How long has this been going on? When? Where? Hotels? Dinners? Etc. Everything. My wife says this is the only time to which I E L B S. There is no way you'd be comfortable enough to bring him to our bed if this hadn't been going on for some time. If you lie to me again, I'm walking out the door and finding a divorce lawyer. She starts crying again. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, it all comes out. Been going on for over nine months. Started with him flirting with her, etc. till he asked her to lunch, and she went. A few drinks later, they rode a hotel. She came home to me that night, like nothing happened. She swears that it was killing her, and she wanted to tell me, but didn't know how. Again, I call BS. If it was killing you, it would not have been so easy to keep it going. They even went to a week-long convention for work. That I used to go with her to. She told me company policy changed and spouses couldn't go anymore. I put my phone away in more silence, then an idea hits me. I look through his clothes and for his phone and ask him for a passcode. He actually gives it to me, so I started going through his phone. I find some pictures of a woman I assume is his wife and ask her a name. Carol. She's very pretty, but not as pretty as my Ashley. I tell him. More pictures of kids, find out he has three, and finally, a family picture of all of them. I hold with the phone and say, a beautiful family. Why don't you throw it all the way for a tumble with my wife? His reply? What do you mean throw it all the way? Me? She really think Carol isn't going to find out? How is she going to find out? Me? I'm going to call her right now. He stands up and says, no, you can't. My wife screams out. Please, you can't do this to him. I lost it. Can't do this to him. You've destroyed me. Our family, our friends, our future, and broken my heart, and you're worried about him? I'm shaking again. Try not to let her see me cry. But I can't hold it together anymore. I fall back in the chair and start sobbing. She tries to come over to me, but I looked her and say, stay the hell away from me. After a while, I calm down and look at his phone again. He again says, please don't. I'm begging you. I swear. I'll tell her. Yeah. Right. I reply. His standing there pleading with me not to as I find her phone number and decide FaceTime would be even better. She answers and, hi, sweet. Looks surprised and says, who are you? Is my husband okay? He is for now. But won't be in a minute. I flip the screen to show him standing there in my wife's robe. I say, I believe you know him. The room he is standing in is my bedroom. The flower robe he's wearing belongs to this woman, swinging the phone to catch my wife trying to pull the sheet over her head, but too late. That's my wife. And I came home early today to find them having sex. I truly feel sorry for her and lousy for how I did it. She starts crying and he tries the honey. I'm so sorry. I can explain. It was just one time, etc. Routine. I tell her not to believe a word that it's been going on for over nine months, and that I spent the last 15 minutes recording all the details they were willing to share. I tell her I'm going to text her my number, and she could send me her an email, and I'll send her the video. I gave him the phone, and I hear her tell him when he gets home, there will be a bag packed outside. And if he tries to come on the house, She'll call the police and hangs up. I toss him his clothes, and he leaves after he's dressed. Now, it's just me and my wife. She looks at me and starts to cry, saying she is so sorry, never meant to hurt me, can I forgive her? It didn't mean anything? All the usual cheaters BS. I look at her and tell her to pack a bag and get the hell out of my house. I go downstairs and pour a drink. I'm sitting on the couch when she comes downstairs. She starts towards me and I say, just stop. She asks if we could talk about this, and I tell her maybe, just maybe, but not now. I tell her it's going to be really hard to not look for a divorce lawyer, and she starts crying again. She looks at me, 
and I know when I love you is coming. I say, don't you dare say that right now? Cause I don't think I will ever believe it anymore. More crying. She turns and walks out the door. Seeing her crying walking out the door, my entire life leaving, I break down and fall on the floor, shaking, sobbing uncontrollably. No idea how long, but I finally sit down, still crying, and call my best friend. I try to speak, but start crying again, and can't get the words out. He asked me if I'm at home, and I kinda grunt, yeah, and says he'll be right there. Thirty minutes later, he's in my house. I'm still crying. I give him my phone with a video up, and he proceeds to watch. I can't bear to hear it and get us both a drink. He comes in the kitchen, takes my drink away, and dumps them both saying, this isn't gonna help you. Tells me I can't stay here tonight alone and go upstairs and pack a bag. I come downstairs, and he has my lab on a leash, and we go to his house. That was ten days ago, and I still feel like absolute crap. I know this was long, but thanks for reading this far. Rough story. Let's see how the community can help prop him up. Change 2001. You handled the initial confrontation very well. Now, you need to move on and start preparing yourself for the future. In some states, you can sue the affair partner for alienation of affection. If you win, awards you money for the affair partner for stealing your spouse's affection from you. Consider reporting both of them to HR at their place of work. Many suggest waiting until you have the divorce finalized decrease the likelihood of having to pay alimony to an unemployed ex. If you decide to reconcile, go ahead and do it. If you decide to attempt reconciliation, then demand that all contact be immediately cut with the affair partner. No more contact in any form whatsoever will be tolerated. Demand access to all electronic devices at all times to check for inappropriate contact and messages. When you get pushed back about it violating their privacy, remind them that they destroyed the trust. And if they want to save the marriage, this is a requirement. Inform them that it is going to take a long time to restore your trust. And that if you think they are continuing to hide things, then it will be harder for trust to be re-established. Demand a postnuptial agreement. If you do not have a prenup, include an infidelity clause where she basically forfeits everything if she cheats again. Since you have kids, even though they are older, demand a paternity test. Expect your wife to push back on this. Probably she will claim you don't trust her. Remind her that she cheated and lied to you about the affair. Don't give in on this. Get the paternity test. Hopefully, the children are yours. However, if it turns out you are not the father, this will provide support for claims of infidelity during your marriage if it does go to divorce. Immediately separate your finances into an account that only you have access to, not her. Cancel all joint credit cards. Remove her from your life, health, and car insurance. Block your credit to prevent anything from being opened in your name. Also, secure all important papers, driver's license, passports, birth certificates, etc. Get an STD and STI check. Keep all correspondence with her to prove what is said. Only meet in public to ensure witnesses for behavior in case she tries to make false claims. If one party recording is legal in your state, do it to have proof of what's said also. Set up security cameras with audio around the house and inside. Make sure the data is secured online, or she cannot access it. Check the cell phone records for a list of calls and texts with the fair partner. If you have cloud online storage, check for pictures and documents about the affair. Print out everything so you have proof in case it is deleted later. Make a few copies and keep one in a secure location that your significant other does not have only you have access. Let all her friends and family know exactly why you threw her out of the house. Let everyone know you caught them screwing at your house. Get ahead of her trying to turn it on you. Do not let her try to blame you for the situation. Best switches. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Our next comment from Red Porsche Killa. OP I'm deflated for you. To read the story made a whole army of frogs appear in my throat. I'm so truly sorry for you.
29 years, 29 years, she threw it away for a screw? Wow. That's deep and it hits very bad. Please tell your friend. Thank you for me. For being your friend. That's grand, and you can't weigh that in gold. Now, 10 days has been some time, and I know for a fact, you're a far cry from cooled down. I'm actually shaking while typing this. You need a notebook and start writing down points. Go back home. You can't leave the house. Dismantle the bed and toss it in the driveway for public display. Maybe even burn it to the ground, mattress, and bedding included. She needs to buy a new bed if it ever comes to that. Make a list of all the assets you both have. Take half of all the cash and put it into a single signature account. Which only you can debit and credit to. Get an attorney. Buy a few digital voice recorders. I know phones are good these days, but you need redundancy. Tell your kids, your family, your in-laws. This can't be staying in the shadow of reality. You're, I feel like soon to be ex-wife, but that's too early to call. If you meet her, have your friend there as a witness, or record the conversation openly. You need evidence, hard evidence. She will turn as soon as the four stages of grief are kicking in and you need to protect yourself. Buy your lab, the largest bone you can get from the butcher. It's well deserved. Stay tall. Don't drink. Try to sleep. If you've trouble time to, which I'd understand, work out. Work at your company. Work hard. You need to tire yourself. Eat healthy. Nope. No alcohol. I know I said that already. But this is key. You can't cloud your judgment. As she drinks, the better, not your circus. We are here to render support. This story of yours is stuff good for a decent nightmare, so you need support. Lots of support. Ask for it. Don't carry it alone because you can't. My divorce and the surrounding stress brought me physically to my knees. And that walk, I had to walk. I've sworn to myself I will never do again. Self-admitting isn't fun, but it was necessary. So don't be a hero. Well, by the way, for me, my heroes are laid to rest at Arlington Cemetery. All the strength for you.